What's going on everybody? JBM back with another video and today I'll be supplementing on this coffee mug as you see here but I'm gonna try something different something that I haven't seen done yet it may have been done I just haven't found it yet but I'm gonna try to supplement on the handle of the coffee mug so if you want to see how that turns out if it even works stick around All right, so like I said in the intro, this is the mug that I've already pressed. It's the uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year mug from my neighbors. I, I think the image, when I printed it, I have it going too far in. It's coming like basically right up on the handle. I want to make that just a little bit smaller. So I went ahead and printed some new ones. I got about four of them right here. But what I want to do differently in this video is put my company name down the handle of this mug, see if it even sublimates like the rest of the mug, if I get a good, uh, you know, press. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down as close to the print as possible. All right, get this out of the way. I'm gonna line this up first. Eyeball it, see how close I am. You know, sublimating on the mugs. This a lot of people that have videos, you know, sublimating on the coffee mug, so this is nothing new. But like I said, I haven't seen anyone that's actually printed on the handle. So hopefully I'm bringing you some new content. Make sure I got nice even coverage all the way around. Got that side, rub it around, get this side. All right, that's that. I am gonna get all four corners because this image does go top to bottom of this coffee mug and I don't want any of the edges of my image to not get a good you know good bleed even though I am going to put this silicon sleeve on it I just want to make sure I have not done this before as far as putting this on the handle. This will be my first time doing it. I don't know how it's going to turn out, to be honest. Um, but my method of doing it, I think I'm going to have my business name reading down the handle. My method of doing it requires me to use one of those shrink wrap sleeves. And because that requires more material, I don't think it's a good idea to um, print all of these coffee mugs as like a you know free gift because that's a lot of material that I'm using just to try to get a good pressure on the handle unless I come up with a different method. All right, so that's on there, but I don't have good pressure. Obviously, I'm just using tape, but still. So, do that. Get the other side. Hopefully, this turns out well. If it does, one of my neighbors. We'll get this mug. Hopefully they don't all talk to each other and say, hey, yours has a 
customized handle. I didn't get that, you know. Hopefully they don't talk to each other like that. So I'm gonna get one more sheet to cover this for any of the blowout. And I'll be right that right back when I get that taped up. Alright, so I'm back. I got the blowout paper already taped around the mug. Now I'm going to get my silicon wrap. Put the mug right in the center. Clamp it shut. All right. The silicon comes around the bottom of the mug and all the way around the top. Now, this is the part that I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Let me get one more piece of tape just to see if it makes a difference. As wrap tape around the handle, I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the shrink wrap, wrap sleeves. Now the shrink wrap sleeves, as you can see, is way too tall for this coffee mug. So what I did was I took it and I cut it into thirds and came out with this smaller section. Hopefully it's not too small. I just needed to wrap around the handle, not necessarily the whole mug. So the silicon wrap is applying pressure to the rest of the mug. I'm just using this to apply pressure to the handle, right on the back side of the handle. Hopefully it works. One thing that I do know about these silicon, um, not silicon, the uh, shrink wrap, is if you over shrink it before you put it in the oven, the oven obviously causes it to shrink more and it'll make the, uh, the shrink wrap kind of tear on you while it's in the sublimation process. So, I don't have a heat gun, but I do have my wife's hair dryer. <laughs> do what you gotta do. Laugh at me if you must. But it still works. So, I'm gonna turn this on hot, high, All right, so this is all I'm going to do. This actually looks pretty terrible, but like I said, when you put it in the oven, all this is going to tighten up anyway. And since I have this right here that's probably going to rip this wrap anyway, I'm not going to shrink it any tighter than that. So let's get this in the oven and see how it goes. All right, so I got my thermostat inside reading 400 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and put this in and I'm going to change it uh, directions halfway through, so I'm gonna do six minutes on one side, come back, turn it for another six minutes. And hopefully everything works out. And it's already starting to shrink. The rest of that paper, we're gonna see. I'm just gonna sit here for a second, see if it breaks it through. Cause it's looking kinda tight with those little edges. It like immediately made it shrink. And it's still shrinking some. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start this timer. Six minutes, and then I'm gonna come back, turn it for another six minutes. We'll see what we got. All right, so that's been 12 minutes. Let me go ahead and open this up. I've already switched it around halfway through. Right, and as you can see, this did not tear. All right. 
I can start to see the uh, sublimation starting to come through, which is always a good thing. So let's get this over to the heat press, see how this turns out before the heat goes through my glove. So we're back on the press. I'm gonna go ahead and take off one of my gloves. Makes it easier for me to get this stuff off. And I'm surprised it didn't break through because mainly this corner right here is really poking through. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut that, peel it off. Make sure I don't get any hot surfaces. Best to take it off when it's nice and hot. That's when it comes off the easiest. Look at that. All right, so I must have moved it around. Got a little bit of ghosting, but y'all see that? Has anybody else done that on YouTube? I don't know if anybody else has sublimated on the handle of a coffee mug. If it has, you know, big ups to you because I haven't seen your video. But, that's hot to me. I'm going to start branding all my coffee mugs. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I might, though. I don't know. Take this off. We're going to see how the print looks. Second one on. I just touched some hot paper. I'm trying to be careful when I scrape this paper off because I don't want to scrape the mug. Because it's pretty hot. Plenty hot. So I got a little bit more space between the handles. This is the first one that I did. They look pretty similar, but this one was right up on that handle, if you can see. And some of the ink did not get in there very well. So I kind of had to open it up a little bit, back that image off. Here's what it looks like. Branded handle, oh yeah. Here's my mug. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to wonderful neighbors. I do have wonderful neighbors because we don't bother each other. <laughs> be honest, I don't even talk to them. Not only because of coronavirus, but because you know, they don't come out the house. But, man, that's how you sublimate, or that's how I sublimate it for the first time onto the handle of a coffee mug. I like the way this turns out. Um, I think I'm gonna give this to one neighbor in particular only because they already moved. They no longer on the block. And I don't want my neighbor saying, hey man, I ain't getting no coffee mug with a, a print on my handle. So that, you know, that eliminates that. I'm gonna mail it to a neighbor that's no longer here. Anyway, if you like the video, I got you sideways. Like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Follow me for more videos. Leave a comment down in the comment section. As always, be yourself, be your best. I'm JBM. I'm out.